continuing my previous talk on our great art let me <coughs> at the outset say that the outstanding feature of indian music is its celebrated system of raga system a raga as i told you and explained very meagerly in my last talk is the resultant form obtained by the various possible permutations and combinations of the acceptable notes manipulated to give a pleasant feeling and musical effect to the listener renjayati iti ragaha so goes our traditional sanskrit definition so a raga should please the listener as well as the performer how does this happen that is our present query the fundamental definition of swara itself is this aspect of making others pleasant and happy toko renjayati it is swara its natural and inherent quality is to make others happy that is why you get elated when you hear or listen to a musical sound emanating from a voice or an instrument now if a particular single note can have this much effect what would be the resultant effect of a combination of notes arranged in a regular musical sequence of infinite varieties and characteristic variations now we have got <clears throat> the complete scale covering all the seven nodes as well as transient scale i use the term scale for some time to give you an idea of the infinite scope of the raga system these scale complete scale are scientifically arranged from 300 years back in a scheme of things called the mela system 72 in number the major diatonic scale i refer to you is called dheera shankara bharana by us he is one among these well known 72 mela another scale for your information is maya malava gaula which is the scale we begin with for any student of music it will be something like this so re ga ma va ga ni sa sa ni da pa ma ga re pa now it is this scale we adopt even for students to begin with and we continue even in our advanced stages for vocal exercises as well as instrumental techniques the ideal practice will be in the in the possible three tempos at least in all the three octaves but the beginner will confine himself to the middle octave as this demonstrate so re ga ma pa da ni sa sa ni da pa ma ga ri sa sa re ga ma pa da ni sa sa ni da pa ma ga ri sa sa re ga ma pa da ni sa sa ni da pa 
Now, this is applied for vocal, vocal practices with the prominent vowel sounds like A, E, U, A, O, AM. That will give you the vocal strength to further development. <coughs> Now, such scale we have got 72 in number and there are other scales with less number of notes, 5 and 6 and in very rare cases, 4. Either in the Arohana there is ascending trend or in the Arohana in the descending trend. The complete picture of a scale will be given by the ascending and the descending trend of notes. And the combination of 4, 5 or 6 notes along with the combination of seven nodes on one of the sides will give you infinite variety. For instance, taking into consideration Sankarabrana or the major diatonic, we have got the famous raga Mohanam. It has got the Madhyam Adhiris fourth and the leading note absent, both in the ascent and the descent. So, the ascent and the descent will be Sarigapadasa Sadhapagarita Now this is called an Audava Raga. A, a Raga or a scale with five notes. We have got our example from Sadhguni. Sarigapanita Sani Pagarisa The fourth note and the sixth is are deleted. Now these are simple cases. We have got combinational forms. For instance, we have got five in the ascent and seven in the descent. For instance, Sani Mapanisa Sani Dabha Magarisa and we have got six in the ascent, seven in the descent. Sarigama Padasa Sanidapa Magarita and so on. All these transcendent scales thus giving rise to 40,000 then down calculated for all the available 72 full scales. Incidentally, a raga or a scale like Navarasa Kannada, which has got only four notes in the ascent and six notes in the descent. Sagamapa Sasanidamagarisa Sidamapasa This is a very interesting scale which will give or which gives a slightly western color and uh, we have got towards the composition which are very much liked by even um, our foreign brothers. Now, apart from the so-called transcendent scales, we have got what are called Vakra Ragas, that is when we have got a descent in the ascent or an ascent in the descent, we call them as Vakra Ragas. Sometimes the number of Vakras are also more than one, ranging up to four to maximum. Now an example will be Sagari Gama Pata Pata Sanidapa Magarita 
Now, Vakra Ragas, according to us, can be infinite because the possibilities cannot be exhausted. The Raga possibilities will be even today available for any artist to conceive. In fact, even till recent times, for instance, the famous musician was there, Patnam Subramanayar, who is the master of my master. He is famous for the invention of a raga called Kathana Kutuhalam, which will be interesting to my Western brethren because it is derived from or it is it, it contains the swaras of the major diatonic and it is a wonderful raga containing a long zigzag code. Sare Madani Kapasa here, the Vakra of the Vikta code is a pretty long jump. Madani Kapasa. It is practically more than half an octave. A fifth downward, rather. Now, <coughs> this is a rough quantitative analysis of the wonderful Raja system. Now, if I am to deal with the qualitative aspect of Raja, it is very difficult for me to expect it on the point because we Indians have a very, very uh, comprehensive uh, conception of the Raja. From, for centuries, built. It is not the mere notes that matters. Whenever we think of a raga, we have got what a form behind. It is almost a definite word with its association to a certain concrete object. So, whenever we think of a raga, the very form comes to our mind. Such is the old and long tradition we have. But anyway, they are all the variations of the musical notes, pure and simple. But such simple and pure notes are employed along with the ornamentations or graces called gamakas and subtle variations of their absolute pitches and personal imagination and individual approaches, all these make to develop or to have developed a concept of the Raja Swarupa. Now, this concept of Raga has led to musicians to expect it, as I told you, for hours together and even days together. But a student should be given some guidance regarding their niceties and the various aspects. It is here that our great composers have come to our rescue. They had very broad vision of this Raja Swarupa. They envisaged the oceanic expanse, but at the same time, for our purposes, gave us cups and even teaspoons of the vast measurement of Raga. They are called composition, simple Krutis or Varmas or Gitas or Ragamanikas or Javalis or Tillanas by whatever name we call all these different types of composition or the production of their fertile imagination and conception which has given us incidentally a concrete form of the infinite Purupa of the Raga. 
Now, for this, they have take, they have taken the help of the Laya aspect or the Hussainic aspect and utilize a definite language also. Though Raga, in its absolute aspect, is a language by itself, then we call as the music absolute. And this absolute, when applied to a definite purpose, to convey a definite purpose to the listeners, with the help of rhythm as well as language, it becomes kalpita or composed. It is something like the ocean water taken into a well-shaped vessel, beautiful artistic vessel. Then it assumes the shape of the vessel. Now, by studying this small, beautiful vessel in detail, I think we will be able to visualize the whole thing. It is just like our studying a small portion of the universe and understanding it well, fully well, and understanding or visualizing the entire cosmic form, something like that. Now, such composition we have got in plenty. The greatest composer ever lived, who composed in lakh, was Purandara Dasa, who lived some 500 to 600 years back. He was the first person to systematize our system of music in the various gradations. He is considered to be the great, great grandfather of all musicians and composers and worshipped with reverence. His compositions go to at the order of lakh, from the simplest to the most complicated one, though time has eaten a good portion, as is the case with any other piece of work. Art. Now, another person of refuge who lived a bit earlier to this great composer was Jayadeva, the author of the song Divine, who dealt with the love of Krishna and Ratha in a beautiful poem and music, musical poem called Gita Govinda. And before that, we don't have as such composition worth naming as we understand it as at present. Though we have much written matter about the scientific aspect of this great art. Now, after Purandaradas, Purandaradas composed the Suladis, what we teach the beginners, the Swaravalis, the simple Swara garments, or so to say, grouping, then the Alankaras, then the simple Gita, and the simple Shruti form and so on. Now, next to him, there were other composers like the Kshetrajna, Buddhadharam Ramadas, Narayana Tirtha, and uh, other great uh, well, uh, scientists or grammarians like Venkatamagi and uh, uh, Somanatha and Sarnadeva. But an era came when our music took a very definite turn, that is from 200 years back, the time of this accepted musical trinity, when the art of music attains the golden perfection. Sri Tyagaraja, Sri Dikshitar and Sri Shama Shastri are even today and even for times to come, are accepted as the trinity of musical art. And their compositions are both for the student of music and for the layman, the Bhagavad Gita of Indian philosophy. They contain the technical perfection of the art spoken through a language at one's joint, meant for the complete welfare of the humanity with the maximum selfless dedication to the highest. 
their compositions are the combinations of beautiful language spontaneously expressed through raga forms and rhythmic patterns unparalleled before and their appeal is therefore nothing but universal any critic or student of any part of the world i am sure must have heard at least a few compositions of this great of these great composers whose uh, birthdays are being celebrated even in an on all international basis in some of their compositions they had even managed to exhibit perhaps their reaction to the harmonical system of music their simple tune like ramam vore varu rasa gusta maninu vina mata sada samade like that ninu vina namadi yendu nilu ade si kari hari ninu vina ninu vina namadi yendu nilu ade si This is one of the compositions of the great saint Jagaraja, composed in Navarata Janada, I referred just a few minutes before. And the purpose of the song is also very significant when he says in the Sharana, Nenu yetsada zuchina nu niwayu nadi rama niwayu nadi He says, Whenever I meditate upon you, my dear Rama, he was his sister Devata. Whenever I meditate you, I see you, I visualize you on all my sides. I have a universal vision. If that is the case, his music must must be of the universal type, and whoever listens to his music with all compliments of a personal expression of an artist. he was no doubt moved whether he was born in this part of the world or that part personally also i have found many people appreciating the uh, interpretation of the various artists of such splendid compositions on various occasions when they are moved to tears such is the power of their music because they meant nothing for them but for others now <clears throat> we have got if we are to develop step by step compositions ranging from geeta varna swarajati this is for us kruti or kirtana then javali or silana or ragamalika now i told you with rutham and beautiful language we get this composition now a geeta is the simplest of all composition with a simple sahitya set in a very simple tala meant for students of music to begin with now the first geeta we teach is on lord ganesha and that is set up in rupaga tala and a raga called malahari ಸಿಂಧೂರವನ ಕರುಣ ಸಗರ ಕರಿವದನ ಲಂಬೋದರಲ ಕುಮಿಕರ ಅಂಬುಸ ಅವರ ವಿನೋದ ಲಂಬೋದರ ಲಕುಮಿಕರ one of the section of this geeta we have got geeta 100 the order of 100 and we teach them in swara part as well as sahitya part for exercise purposes next is what are called swarajati they are the next development for the students that is they are set in a beautiful sahitya 
said till the tala but not so simple as gita because in the gita you get even akaras elongated for instance ane le karavo ni pole di sakal chakra purana dinau sala dinau sala parika sureya aa elongated vowels those are all meant for vocalizations and uh, technique um, instrumental technique now sarajati is of a bit advanced type they are sometimes sung even in platform for instance there is i mean i mentioned about one of the tunities the shama shastri he is supposed to be a person an expert person in composing sarajati one of the most uh, popular prajadis are composed in the raga bhairavi that more approximate to your minor scale i'll just uh, sing a sample of it ambakara ma krishna ambakara on the goddess the absolute mother in a very nice setting of tala called mitra chapu it is suggestive of the eternal dance of the mother all powerful mother the raga itself is called bhairavi the, the raga name also means it is goddess herself and the delineation of the raga and the the portamento is so vivid and expressive that hardly any person can improve on, on it excepting on excepting the artist at best can give a very nice presentation by his own imagination and control of his voice and uh, a devoted approach to things now this is called a sarajati this sarajati these sarajatis are sometimes sung even before an audience in a very polished manner now i shall pass on to what are called varnas varnas are technical composition meant prayers for abhyasa or practice but used or employed as well in concepts which have definite section namely the pallavi the anupallavi and the charana the difference between the varna and the next step that is kruti or kirtana is that this varna forms a bridge as it were between the practical that is the uh, abhyasa section and the sabha section that is the conscious section the varna contains therefore at besides these three well known sections four five passages and the sahitya is also limited and replete with akaras and nikaras and nikaras meant for vocalizers and the perfection of the vocal system and the instrumental technique so a person is supposed to undergo all these formalities or pre preparation 
then only he will and he, he will be able to approach it to the in a in a manner which he is expected to do now for instance a varma will be like this with a beautiful preface of Raga Alapana 
followed by all these processes will normally take in our concert not less than an hour and a half now i uh, just try to impress on you what a kriti will be like taking an example of one of the kritis in telugu by our greatest composers sri jagaraj swami now the kriti i am going to sing is in the raga bhairavi it is a description of the darbar of his sister devata rama and he says the the nearness of any person or the presence of any person in that divine darbar will eliminate or take away from that person all sins all undesirable elements and make him elevated and purified the song runs that he has got also a beautiful simile he says the divine concept sita and rama were like the moon and his consort rohini there are beautiful similes like that so it is a combination of poetry and high flown music now this composition in simple pattern runs like this kolo vai iruvu kuna are rama ko samunde pa composition is elaborate presentation of the kriti um, similar to the structure of the south indian temple his subtle gamakas peculiar to the veena all these have earned a name for him 
peculiar to himself. Now I am afraid I cannot uh, sing those compositions which are because they are pretty long. Now the next impo- next uh, type of composition is called ragamalika. Ragamalika or long pretty long composition set in a particular sala, different sections being sung in different ragas. Raga Malika, Garland of Raga. Now we have got Raga Malika sung without rhythm also, as when we do in a sloka rendering, with Raga changing from one section of the sloka to the other section. Now these Raga Malikas give a kaleidoscopic view of things. They will not satisfy each and every Raga aspect as such, but they will satisfy the general listener with that much of idea of a kaleidoscope. So the average listener is satisfied very much with the presentation of Raga Manika. Now the next important and uh, interesting type of composition is a chillana and a javali. These are all comparatively simpler ones. A javali is a practically erotic composition, so to say, with a tinge of romance and uh, set in tune comparatively light classical type, though they are also handled by musicians of repute. Mostly they are composed in classical ragas as well. Now, chillanas are rhythmic patterns with jati incorporated, like starting and so on. One thing I have left out is a very typical composition called padam. A padam, whose, a padam is a composition set in beautiful raga setting in a very slow tempo, whose theme is apparently love or singara, but whose love aspect is sublimated as, as it were to the union of the human soul to the Divine Soul. The most celebrated author and composer of these Padas is Kshetrajna, who has given us hundreds and thousands of these Padas in the set theme, that is, his, the, the theme of a Pada will be having always the lover, the beloved, and a third person, the friend of Sachi, as you call. Now, Lord Krishna is the hero of these Padas, and Ratha, the heroine, and there will be a Sachi in between. Now, the handling of these Padas with this set of theme, or with this type of theme, namely Singara or love affair, is typical because our ancestors and composers sought knowledge and human civilization or human upliftment must be made by a comparison of the best known things to them. And the higher aspect of life was made clearer to them by an analogy or what is called a symbology this way. Now Ratha, the heroine, is the representative of all human souls like our souls, and Lord Krishna is the divine soul. And to approach any higher soul or higher authority, naturally we require a third person, a mediator. Now this is the general theme and this composer, wonderful composer, imagine so many situations and they compose beautiful padam. A sample of the padam will I sing now 
which is composed in a very rare raga called Navaroz. by Sisaki to the heroine Ratha about the condition of Lord Krishna's love to her. Incidentally, the raga in which it is composed is called Navaroj, a popular raga both in the classical sphere and the realm of folk music as well. Thus, friends, I have tried in my own way to give you a bird's eye view of the various factors of scale building and raga system and the various compositions we are in usage in our country in the present time. Thank you.